We have all seen the very popular video from SNS showing you how to tune this guy right here, the Super E carburetor, one of my favorite carburetors. And good news, all you've got to do is plug in your dyno that you've got in your home shop, hook up that oxygen sensor you've got in your cabinet, and look on your computer screen for a reading between 12 and 13. 12 and 13 what, you might be asking? I have no idea. I'll be totally honest with you, I tuned out as soon as I realized I don't have any of the equipment that they show in that video. So today, I'm gonna give you the Grease's Garage Guide to Tuning Your SNS Super E Carburetor for the Common Man. I'm Grease, you're watching Grease's Garage, and I'm gonna help you skip the struggle. Step one, reset your carburetor to factory settings. You might be thinking to yourself, but Grease, I've got it pretty close and I don't wanna lose the settings I've already got. No, you don't have it pretty close. That's why you clicked on this video about how to tune this guy right here. The only way that I can get you over the finish line is I know that you're starting from the same point that I am. So. I'll put those settings right here over my shoulder. You want your idle mixture screw one and a quarter turns out from seated. You want your idle speed screw half a turn in from lightly seated. And you want your accelerator pump two full turns out. Once you've got your carburetor reset to these settings, we're ready to go for a ride. guys we are doing step two right now warming up this motorcycle if you're gonna adjust your carburetor it's very important that you don't do that while the motor is cold it's a good looking pup so take that bike for a spin rip it out for a good 20 minutes minimum really want to get that bike as warm as it gets because you don't want to find out that you did all this work and adjusted your bike perfectly, but then as soon as it warms up, your idle speed's too high, your mix screws off, and everything's out of whack. So I know it's tough, I know it's tough, but you gotta go ride that motorcycle. Now that you've got the bike all warmed up, the first thing we're gonna do is set your idle speed. Now, SNS recommends an idle speed of 950 to 1050 RPM. But nobody ever pulled up to a chopper event and said, hey, nice tachometer, where'd you get it? So I'm gonna assume that you, like myself, don't have a tack on your bike or any way to know for sure what RPM your bike is set at. If we were smart people, we wouldn't be riding choppers, but we know where we're at and we know what we've got to deal with. So here's how we're gonna do it. I'll roll in a clip right here showing you where that adjuster is. And what I want you to do is listen to the sound of the bike. I'm gonna take the idle too high, then I'll bring it back down low, and then I'll find that sweet spot in the middle. Listen to the sound of my motor, set your motor to the same speed. Now that you've got your idle speed dialed in, we're ready to move on to your fuel mix screw. Before I tell you how to actually set this screw, I just wanna explain what this screw is doing. The further in you twist this screw, the more it's blocking off a port that lets fuel into your carburetor. So as you turn it in, your mixture is getting leaner less fuel. As you turn it out, that screw is coming away from that port and making your mixture richer, more fuel. So we've got this set at the factory recommended one and a quarter turns out. The way we're going to adjust it is we're gonna turn that screw out until the bike runs poorly, and then we're going to turn that screw in until the bike runs poorly, and we're gonna set it halfway between those settings.
you're probably only going to be turning this a quarter to three quarters of a turn total is a very fine adjustment. And one other thing to remember is turn a quarter at a time and then give the bike a second to actually respond to the change. It's not instantaneous. When you turn in a quarter, it's taking a second to adjust that pressure inside the carburetor. One more thing I wanna note about that fuel mixture screw before we move on is it is actually a great guide for determining whether you have the right intermediate jet in your bike. If you have to turn that mixture screw more than three turns out, from seated, you have too small of an intermediate jet in your bike. So this screw is gonna be your guide. And the reason you know that is because, remember, as you turn that mixed screw out, you're adding more fuel. If you have to add that much more fuel, your intermediate jet is not giving your bike enough gas. Similarly, if you can turn your mixed screw all the way in and your bike is still running, you have way too big of an intermediate jet in there. Your bike should need a little extra fuel from this circuit in order to run properly. So if your bike is able to run without this circuit at all, that is too big of an intermediate jet. You're gonna get terrible gas mileage and you're gonna foul your plugs. So as you're making these adjustments, take note of how far in or out. Mine ended up being set perfectly at one and one eighth turns out from seated. The next step in our carburetor tuning process is to adjust our accelerator pump. Now, SNS has said explicitly that they never recommend running a velocity stack on a street driven motorcycle because it will create poor throttle response. So imagine their disappointment to find this video showing you how to tune your carburetor with a velocity stack on the Super 8. It is not ideal. I do grant that. It's not the best setup. However, it just doesn't matter to me. The throttle response is adequate. It gets me where I need to go and I like the way it looks. But if you want better throttle response, you really want to dial in your accelerator pump, probably better to use a standard filter. Best bet would probably be the factory teardrop cleaner from SNS. All of that being said, let's get into it. To begin the adjustment, remember we had this at two turns out on the factory settings. We're gonna start over on this setting now that we've got the other two components dialed in. So go ahead and turn that screw all the way in until it is lightly seated. From this point, you're going to crack your throttle wide open and check the throttle response. Now what you're gonna see in this video here is me turning the accelerator pump screw out. That is adding more fuel when you twist the throttle. I'm gonna turn it out a full turn, check the throttle response, and then go in half turn increments from there until the bike responds well to the throttle. Then you know your accelerator pump is all good to go. Let's see what it looks like. The next step in your carb tuning journey is to check your main jet to make sure you've got the right size in there. Two different ways to do that. Both of them require us to be out riding the bike. So let's go take a rip. All right guys, so there's two different ways that you can check your main jet to see if you've got the right size. The first is the way SNS recommends, and that's to do a roll on in third gear from 50 up to 70. Now, as you can see on this bike right here, there's no speedo, there's no tack. So just take your best guess, but I'm gonna show you how that looks doing a 50 to 70 roll on in third gear. All right, this is third gear. We're going about 50 right now. Let's kick it up to 70 and see what it does. Now, I'll be honest, that feels pretty good. I can't really notice any loss of power or any issues with the way that feels. 
I'm actually really glad to hear that because now what we're going to do is compare that test against a test that was told to me by a lot of old heads and that I have seen recommended on forums. And that is for us to go do a full wide open throttle for about five seconds and then pull the clutch in, kill the power to the bike, pull off to the side of the road. Right, guys so we just did a wide open throttle killed the motor and now we are ready to see what it looks like on those plugs so I'll go ahead and get these spark plugs removed and then I will show you what each one looks like and we'll find out if our main jet needs to be changed Again, this is a 72 main jet and an 80 inch motor. Yeah, look at that plug. That is way lean. So the 72 main jet is way too lean for my front cylinder. Let's see what the rear cylinder is looking like. Super, super lean. Okay, so we need a much larger main jet. So this is how you find out if your main jet is too big or too small. So let's break down what we just saw right there. Obviously my main jet 72 was too lean for the setup I'm running. Quick note on that, it actually used to be the perfect main jet when I had the teardrop air cleaner in the stock air filter on this carburetor. But when I went to the velocity stack, I introduced more air into that carburetor with a freer flowing setup with no filter. And when you increase the air, you have to increase the fuel. So that test confirmed that I do need a larger main jet to keep up with the extra air of the velocity stack. Just wanted to include this breakdown as a reminder that if you change your air cleaner or you change your exhaust, People don't realize this, but if you have a stock baffled exhaust and then you go to an open uh, drag pipe design, you are adding more air to the system through the exhaust. So both of those options might cause you to have to change your jets. So just wanted to mention that if you are planning to change your air cleaner or your pipes, do that first before you tune your carburetor or you might end up having to tune it again. If you've taken all the steps you see here in this tuning video and your carburetor still is not running right, the next step in your tuning journey is gonna to be to watch this video right here, my part one in the Super E series, where I show you how to disassemble your carburetor, take off the float bowl, clean out your jets, and if necessary, one of the great things about these carburetors is it is super easy to get rebuild kits for them. In fact, I've got two links in the description, one for the master rebuild kit that comes with literally everything that goes into the carb, and then another basic rebuild kit that comes with all the essentials that you would need to do a full refresh on your SNS Super E. I appreciate you guys checking out the channel, and I'll catch you next week.